So good evening and welcome to uh, everyone for this webinar series on air space defense security maritime and uh, GIS and remote sensing. Of course, today being a fifth day, last day, I'm sure it's not uh, you know least day, but uh, definitely uh, to be have a two eminent speakers the expertise in that area. So they are going to tell us that what kind of scope, what kind of opportunities we are going to have in GIS and remote sensing technologies. So since Eminent speakers are there. I don't want to. I and uh, I just want to introduce uh, again moderator uh, group captain Naidu sir. So he is part of Nalsar. Uh, Swarna Subarao sir is all you know. Last four days we were speaking. They are all you know uh, part of Nalsar. They are uh, adjunct faculties, visiting faculties, and uh, where again Shivkumar sir. All are you know part of the Nalsar family normally we say. So uh, being again group captain Naidu sir was associated with Nalsar for last you know. Seven to eight years as a uh, faculty, so he is also, of course, alumni of you know Cadel. He introduced earlier also, so he is uh, worked with 35 years of you know, experience in Indian Air Force in various positions, and now he also has Akash Law Firm, where I mentioned earlier also. He has a you know he is doing a lot of consultancy with many many multinational corporations. He is uh, you know. Uh, is having a uh, multidisciplinary sort of thing. He is a specialist in aviation tech, uh, technology, security. Then he is also again in the recent past uh, group captain Naidu is uh, conducting series of uh, uh, sessions and a lot of writing on the uh, cyber security. That's a new uh, you know added area. So any uh, issue normally we go to him and he is our you know again cyber security specialist. He moved from aviation to cyber uh, specialist. So. Uh, Sir, again, you know, uh, this is a session over to you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, uh, you know, it's always a, a challenge as well as a pleasure to be speaking in front of the professor who has taught you. Uh, thank you so much, um, mm -hmm. Professor Reddy. But, but uh, I, I believe always Guru Numinjana Shishu, sir. You are all <laughs> That's your humility and humbleness. Thank, thank you, you so much, sir. Thank mm -hmm. you. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think. Uh, Wonderful four sessions we had. I'm sure today's session, the fifth session of this series that we had last year, we had five sessions extremely well taken uh, and uh, very well received. We had wonderful uh, feedback from the participants. The takeaways, e even from one and a half hours program, are so very many that people come back again and again. That's what uh, makes us very happy at Nalsar. And uh, the fifth of the sessions, thank you so much for being here. And we have Two experts par excellence, the two of them who have done, I mean, I, I, I say from maps to apps is what they have seen. They have started when maps were being made physically, manually, and today they are, uh, they are leading uh, uh, in institutions and organizations which are into all kinds of technologies. Now with AI and ML, they are all into everything that is there. So let's see the kind of transformation in the field that they have seen within this their careers. So that is the kind of richness with which these two experts come. Uh, first of all, uh, Professor Reddy for visualizing, although this program has not been seen, we, like we were discussing initially, not being seen, not been uh, received the program per se in the numbers, in terms of numbers for the Nalsar University. But as you always said, the, the, the academic social responsibility of the Nalsar is probably, uh, you know, taking this program forward year on year. Uh, despite the numbers being less, but uh, this is a specialized field as we were discussing. It will probably need a little more time to sink in. Uh, I remember as an air traffic controller, uh, you know, the, I used to go to a particular room, which was very, um, you know, dark, mostly not very well lit. And we had to search for the maps of different, uh, you know, scales. And uh, from that time, only military people mostly and the people who were deployed on survey uh, were only in, uh, interested in these maps. Today, everyone wants to use GPS and they don't even know where the GPS comes from, but they are all, uh, you know, so yeah. much aligned. Uh, I was telling the other day, someone, a person from my village has, uh, uh, who was considered as useless. He has moved to Hyderabad city and he makes, he's minting money based on GPS. You know, what does he do, sir? The scrap material from the building, buildings which are being renovated or uh, yeah. repaired in the old city and parts of city. He, he deploys people to collect, uh, collect it and dump it in some other place where there are new constructions coming up. So he uses this location to 
to pick it up, sends it to the people who are uh, working there. See the kind of democratization of this particular technology that has happened. Enormous amount, but for these technologies to be uh, understood as career options, uh, has he understood that uh, there is a geospatial technology that is involved in his making money? He has not understood, but he is using it. Similarly, the people who are there, in, whether in law profession or whether it is in technology, for them to understand, I was just mentioning about a doctor, a postgraduate in medicine doing the course in, uh, in uh, GIS. So th that's something which is very different, uh, real interdisciplinary kind of a study. So it will take some time, sir. But in the meantime, we are very happy that uh, the, the uh, register uh, logins have crossed 100. Uh, we are very happy that people are receiving the webinars well. Yes, we will definitely see the numbers in terms of uh, you know, admissions in the classes, I mean, courses as well. Uh, that's one. Where, as far as the, the subject is concerned, the applications are being used by everyone in what which is the sector which is not touched by the GIS. No sector is left today which is not touched by the GIS. Yesterday we were talking about the space. Whatever space and satellites are producing the data, most of it is gulped and guzzled by the GIS specialist. They straight away take it from there itself. It is downloaded onto the computers and the computers are churning out required outcomes in terms of intelligence in terms of useful data and information the data processing happening automatically now there are so many people working behind that to make it happen for some uh, input from satellite to come directly uh, onto your mobile phone and to show it on your mobile phone like i am sitting here in hyderabad and uh, most of the people participants are sitting elsewhere we are, we all are connected because we are on internet now so it's all the data that's being created and it's used. So that way, I think the telecom sector, the transportation sector, biggest user. Transportation sector is the biggest user. Earlier, we were mostly dependent on very, uh, you know, um, old pattern of navigation, old pattern of um, road map reading and things like that. It's all gone now. So sometimes the GPS takes us to the wrong routes also and where you are stuck also. That's also happening once in a while, but very less. Very less. So transportation sector is using a lot of this GS technologies. Real estate, major consumer, manufacturing, environment and sustainability, the natural resources uh, mapping and, and uh, uh, how to protect them and things like that. Education, health, insurance, retail, uh, you name a as supply chain. I mean, very big use. Today, uh, earlier years when you posted something, a parcel was sent, you had no way to find out where it was. But today, the moment it is given to the uh, courier chap, you know there is a message coming. Okay, your parcel is booked. Next, you are tracking. The tracking line is coming on the phone. How is it happening? It's all because of the GS technologies and the development that has happened. So that way, I think all of us are impacted in a very, very big manner as far as the technologies and its applications are concerned. But what are the opportunities for us, the scope for us? This is something which probably it, it's not sinking in as fast as we probably are uh, using these information. That is because technology is changing very rapidly. I think David Forrest, the professor Reddy was mentioning. The cultural lag between the growth in technology and the uh, assimilation of that technology. Usage is happening, but culturally we are not able to assimilate that. Because there is no time. The technology is changing so very rapidly that there is no time for it to be assimilated. When wheel was invented, uh, people to make a uh, bullock cart also two wheel, it, it took a lot of time. But today, what is there in uh, your, uh, your um, smartphone today, tomorrow it is outdated. There is something else is coming. Outdated again, something, something else is coming the third day. So the, if the technologies are changing so rapidly, uh, for it to be assimilated, it is there is a lag and that lag will only widen as we go past uh, in terms of time. It will only widen and it will become more and more. But we need to understand that there are many opportunities in between. The opportunities, especially in terms of law, in terms of legal professionals, these are some things which we need to understand. And non-lawyers also for the technologies, for the, uh, for the people who are working in various other sectors, like I know, the uh, National Highway Authority of India is using a lot of GIS technologies and there are very many people who are employed. There are many software professionals who are creating the softwares for that. 
there are AI ML specialists who are working in this particular field. So there are there are various applications. So that way, I think the scope is very vast. I am not the expert to speak about the scope, the opportunities that are available. We have two extremely you know, informed and knowledgeable um, legends here in front of us. First, um, we will. Um, uh, I'll just introduce and speak a little about uh, Dr. Swarna Subaro, Surveyor General of India. I mean, uh, it's like, wow, he has been there. That kind of a position it is. And it used to be earlier, much more powerful before uh, all of us got the things in, uh, in our uh, cell phone. And uh, he is associated with Nansar as adjunct professor. Long, longest to sur serving Surveyor General of India. <laughs> The okay. longest serving surveyor general of India and, uh, you know, the geospatial professional who has vast experience, three and a half decades of experience uh, in almost all disciplines, especially the technology and the management. That's the, that's the, uh, the best thing about it. And uh, he, he has led survey of India and surveyor general since 2007, that uh, 2010, that's what it is. Excellent management skills with experience in client management, business analysis, project management, strategic consulting studies, design, development, and management of surveying and GIS databases, review of spatial data framework policies. That's where the, 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 the contribution is very um, particularly important because that times whatever policy formulation ecosystem has been created, today we are seeing that being accommodative of the changes that are happening. If those policies were not that flexible, that foresighted and farsighted, we would have found a lot of difficulties in accepting the changes that are coming in technologies that are coming so rapidly in technologies. So that way, I think his contribution is immense. So he has visited a lot of countries, neighboring countries, um, you know, especially the countries which are joining us uh, on official missions, uh, help those countries also create systems which can uh, you know, improve their own service. Uh, I think I can go on and on. Uh, I, I'll request uh, uh, Dr. Subarao to kindly uh, start his session because of paucity of time. I I may I may be you know I will stop here. But thank you very much, sir. First of all, for uh, sparing your time and joining. Uh, we know at Nalsar you are always there whenever there are um, classes and whenever there is a request from Professor Balkis already. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, over to you, sir. Your presentation is visible. Right, so thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Wing Commander Naidu My presentation today, okay, good evening, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Today, as I was advised, I'll be speaking on uh, geospatial technology in India, the scope and opportunities. I'll try to give you, I'll try to put you in the scene, nothing beyond that. In uh, 15, 20 minutes, we can't do anything much more than that. Okay, uh, mostly it will be technical only, but as they say, once uh, there are more than two people around, certainly there is scope for advocates. So in this technology also, as the projects has, there is so much scope for this technology and uh, its applications in the country. There are going to be a lot of legal uh, procedures, frameworks to be made and then followed to be regulated. So all these things, they lead, they open up doors to immense, uh, what I say, with immense scope to the legal professionals also. Already, uh, the space class course, which you have seen in NALSA, the way it is attracting uh, attention of the people, it shows how powerful these things have become today. Anyway, now going into this, what is uh, well, fundamentally the GIS technology is uh, how the GIS te technology got developed is that basically map is a most basic infrastructural tool. Anything you want to do, any kind of planning you want to do, the first thing you require is a map. That has been sort of an established fact. I don't need to discuss further. And secondly, attribute data, the data that is particular that for that particular exercise for that particular uh, project is the attribute data. And uh, then these two things, see, earlier also we used to use a map, we used to have attribute data only in an analog form, taking a hard copy and then uh, using this data, making calculations and all. We used to come out with uh, what I say, the results or the conclusions. And it is proved, it was uh, sort of established that usage of a proper map in any engineering project, it results in saving of 5 to 10% cost. Whereas, even if you make a specific map for that particular project, like you get the fresh survey done and fresh mapping done, I'm thinking of analog this. 
the cost of survey and mapping never used to exceed 1%. So straight away, you can imagine these technologies give a yield of about five times the investment that you make immediately before at the stage of completion of the project itself. These are the things that the benefit that we derive. Now, geospatial data. For the geospatial technology, the name I suggest, the geospatial data is the backbone of it. The sources of the geospatial data are, is the map. From the map, we derive the data in digital form, which is called geospatial data. And how do we get it? And earlier, it was a hard copy map. And then in 1940, earlier, we used to do the field survey for doing for carrying out. First, we used to carry out the survey and then map it. It was done in field, taking a first we started with a plain sheet, a plain or a white drawing paper, and it was taken to the field and map was made. Then in 40s, as a result of developments and research during the Second World War, it was discovered and it was a sort of refined and made into a technology that you can take a photograph from the aircraft and then from that you can make a map. That exercise was termed as photogrammetry and photogrammetry was very popular even today also. Analog photogrammetry was popular till almost uh, 95 or so. And then slowly, the gradually the uh, into the market, the satellite imagery came in. It started with a very low resolution, 30 meter or so resolution satellite. And then today, you know, we get satellite imagery of sub meter or maybe, I don't think sub centimeter, maybe five, centi five centimeter, 10 centimeter accuracy or resolution imagery must be available today. And then finally, off late in the last few years, say maybe five, six years or so, another new thing that has come up is the drones, the drone technology. The drone has been identified as a good mechanism or a good instrument to capture air photography. So if you load a camera onto the drone properly and then take capture photography and then convert it into, say, by carrying out photogrammetric exercise, we can convert it to a good map. This has been very successful. And because of this, today the drones have become very, very popular. Now, for all this, today we are embracing a digital resolution, a revolution. The geospatial data and use of geospatial data has transformed itself from a mere mapping tool. It was earlier geospatial data was only a mapping to an industrial process offering value in terms of enhancing productivity, cost effectiveness transparency, safety, and project management. It has become such an indispensable and uh, what I say, uh, flexible tool. Because of that, because of this, the GIS technology is becoming more and more popular. Okay, maps are not just uh, what I say, driving apps today. They are driving economies too. That maps, map-based apps have become so powerful today that they are driving the economies also. In this increasingly interconnected world, one of the most powerful way of exploring the physical and digital landscapes for business and governments to make decisions, etc., is through where that is the spatial dimension. Best example is where you want to locate a warehouse, where you look at, want to locate a facility, etc. These are all very easily done using the geospatial technology. In fact, one of them is known as LBS, LBS, location-based system. That is also about and ITS, intelligent transportation systems. That is, you have the transportation technology on one side, you integrate it with the geospatial technology, that is GIS, and then the results are outstanding. So the transportation sector is one of the biggest users of uh, GIS technology. Now, I have an old report only. I tried to get a new one, but I couldn't. Maybe because of uh, the COVID issues or my friend couldn't get it for me. I don't know the reason. But here you can see the McKinsey Global Institute has reported in the year 2010 that you please read this particularly the first column very carefully. It has highlighted that the land market distortions in India lead to 1.3 loss, 1.3 percent loss in GDP, which is coming to around 2,40,000 crores of Indian rupees. It is not the land market distortion. Distortions, how the distortion will come out of dispute or something like that. All these things put together, the loss to the country is 240, 2,40,000 crores of INR. In other words, effective use of mapping and the mapping technology, and if we correct these distortions, the country would save 
two lakh forty thousand crores from two thousand ten itself. Today, you know, if you put the inflation and all those things, this two forty must have crossed five hundred or five lakh crores. Okay, and the cost of doing all this, it is very interesting to know that. See, today one aspect of that we are doing that is uh, not only one; it is the most important aspect of that is the cadastral mapping, the revenue mapping, what we call. See, if you own a piece of land in your village or somewhere. The titling and all is done based on the cadastral surveys. So the cadastral surveys and the records are being sort of purified or corrected across the country today. The cost of that, I have presently I am involved with the AP state of AP. In AP, it is estimated around 957 crores or so. Let us say 1000 crores. Okay, across the country, it doesn't exceed 50,000 crores. And the saving I am speaking of, it is not my estimate, as you can see, Mac can see. Global Institute, which the government of India also respects a lot. As per their estimate itself, the yield, the benefit is going to be about 5 lakh crores, 10 times straight away. If you run the project for 3 years, after 3 years, it is 10 times. So it is, what I say, uh, the benefit of implementation of the geospatial data and its technologies properly in one aspect of governance is so much. I am not speaking, I have not yet mentioned also the other uses of the data, this mapping and the attribute data if we collect and integrate it. Like in places like irrigation, in uh, uh, what I say, in urban uh, management and all. Okay. In transportation, that is roads, railways, etc., etc. In, med say in uh, medicine, in the health sector, everywhere. In business, like in locating proper business houses, where you locate in those areas, also it is immense. If you all, if you add all those sectors into one play, say together, then probably the benefit is not ten times. It may cross fifty times or maybe sixty times. I I just don't know. It is something a figure which it is a bit difficult to calculate. But there are I think probably next time I'll be able to come out with some figure like that. Now, contribution to the global economy. What geospatial is, how it is contributing to the global economy is something you can see. These figures are again a bit old. It is one tri trillion dollars of business sales facilitated by digital maps in 2016. 515 billion consumer benefit derived from map services. 5% improvement in revenues and cost savings by the company. 4 million direct jobs generated by mapping services. 75% sectors representing the global GDP are directly benefited by uh, what I say, the mapping uh, exercises. 1686 million metric tons of reduction in vehicle emissions because of digital maps. See, these are the benefits that we have by putting geospatial data, by generating, first we have to generate proper geospatial data and put it to proper use. These are the benefits. You can imagine Totally, it will change the entire scene. It will probably, it will not probably, certainly, if we implement all these schemes properly in the country, then certainly the quality of life also improves substantially. Now, the estimated value of Indian geospatial economy in 2017 and 18 is estimated at in the domestic market itself was 7,679 crores, in the government sector, 6,218 crores. See, as I said, in AP itself, they have they are spending about 1,000 crores. So you can imagine the 6,200 is, the figure is quite small. It must have gone up substantially. It must be around maybe 20, 30,000 crores or so. Okay. Now, employment within geospatial economy in 2017 and 18 is, in the domestic market, it is 1,45,000 people. In the export services, 66,000. In the government services, 39,300. Before yeah, the scope of GIS applications today is that GIS technology is, as you know, it is a good decision support system based on the scientific data that we collect and we use in the project. And it can be effectively applied in any engineering or municipal or revenue or even administrative projects also. In modernizing cadastral mapping and creating a national database system, this is very useful. This yields to, as I understand, if you go to the proper source, maybe even in Google also, if you see 
more than 50% of the cases that are there in the indian courts today they pertain to the dispute related to land so if all these things are clean 50% of the workload of the court they get sort of reduced then we can concentrate on other areas of jurisprudence or what i say the law that is there where we can improve and we can improve the living conditions of the people maybe we can we can make them more safe better and all integration of artificial intelligence enhances the power of technology multifold and uh, this is uh, another uh, new aspect that has come probably like one of the best examples i can give here is the transportation sector where the its and ai integrated and used very well now the lastly the drones in gis today in the geospatial technology as i said to capture the geospatial data the best uh, instrument the best equipment the best vehicle available is a drone and because the drones today are in a position to give you very high resolution imagery which was not possible even probably today with the conventional aircraft with a conventional aircraft we can capture photography of maybe 5000 or 2000 at the most on 1 is to 2000 scale but with the drones we are getting much much larger than that 5 gsd 2 gsd 2 gsd is 2 cm ground space distance you can see if you put your mobile phone on the road and fly the drone a survey quality drone and see the images you can see your mobile phone also this kind like uh, in uh, recently we were, i was working with the the images of tadepalli gudam see the road markings are very clear see to put a point we wanted to uh, have some uh, what is a measurements done i could measure the corner of a road marking you know white and yellow patches are there yellow rectangles are uh, painted on the road even that rectangle the corner of the rectangle i, I could identify i could identify the interlock bricks that are laid in uh, sub house port or something portico uh, sorry just outside the house this kind of resolution is available using the drones excellent scope for drone companies today in the land survey because ap has started ap is coming out with a with a proper tender also very very soon probably in the next 2 3 weeks they'll come out with the tender and this is going to be followed by many states in the country already i think five states are into the job so you can imagine the rest of the states have to fall in line they'll certainly come and they'll do that there is immense scope for the drone survey companies in this country it can drones can also be used in traffic management agricultural mapping hydrology disaster mapping crowd management etc etc there is no limit in fact my opinion is that gis technology can be used in any kind of work any kind of uh, involves a sizable area that is all is required and once it is there the drone is only uh, aerial platform that we have to get so these can be used everywhere now coming back to this as i said i have only mentioned about uh, the land survey that is a cadastral survey of it if we get into the other areas as i said if you go for the field of irrigation where we can use this technology and we can come out with many and th thirdly the last is the what i say the admin city administration the, the urban uh, uh, what i say urban uh, management and administration there there is enormous scope limitation of gis in proper taxation in proper uh, relocation of facilities etc etc and once you implement this once we get into this technology and implement such a huge and massive project that affects the lives of the people in at large a good effect only at a huge crowds are getting affected and uh, it is improving their life say certainly it opens up so much of what i say scope for legal regulations framing of legal regulations monitoring mechanisms etc etc so that way it, this is uh, as i said the technology has immense uh, geospatial technology has immense scope in almost every field and it is coming up very well and there are many many opportunities and challenges are also there but as you know as professionals one should learn to live with the challenges and uh, what i say draw the benefit of the technology that is available so with this i conclude and uh, as i said if any participant intends to raise any query i have given my email as well as my mobile number here and then uh, formally i acknowledge 
one or two slides, one, more than one or two slides, I have uh, sort of taken from a friend of mine, Mr. Sanjay Kumar. He is the CEO of Geospatial Media and Publishing. With this, I thank you all, ladies and gentlemen. And now it is over to Wing Commander Naidu once again. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much. Sir. That that was quick, but um, you know, a lot of information within that within that uh, short span of time. Thank you so much. Uh, now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have another stalwart with us. Uh, we are fortunate to have two of them today. Uh, they have they are bringing different kind of uh, expertise and different set of uh, information that we would be getting from him. Uh, we have Major General uh, Dr. Arshiv Kumar, a uh, retired Major General. Uh, he has served uh, the services with LN and, and, and a lot of contribution as far as uh, his work in these services was concerned because as I was saying, uh, as an ATC officer, we would always look for those maps. Uh, the flyers would look for maps in Air Force, Navy, uh, Army depends to a large extent on the maps because uh, the technologies that time were not there. In any case, today also the technology is not permitted at, at uh, many locations. He has been head of uh, the uh, military survey, uh, director military survey. Uh, he is presently a director with, uh, I, he is president with IIC Technologies, uh, a large company which is providing services to every big company that uses the GIS <coughs> data almost in every industry, uh, whether it is ONGC, aviation companies, and you know infrastructure companies everywhere. everywhere. Uh, he is director uh, of the Open uh, Geospatial Consortium. 15 years he has been there. He has been pro vice chancellor with uh, Gatham University, uh, one of the finest uh, private universities earlier, uh, created very early stages. Uh, it has its name. Uh, uh, now it has its branches elsewhere also. He was pro vice chancellor there. And uh, an alumni of IIT Delhi, he has done his PhD from there. Uh, you know, what, what has he not done uh, as far as uh, especially his tenure as CEO of NSDI is concerned? This is an organization. Just look at uh, 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 an army officer who has served in Survey of India for almost 11 years, who has served under the Ministry of Science and Technology and headed the organization NSDI, uh, National um, you know, Spatial Data Infrastructure. It's under the uh, Department of Science and Technology. A huge organization, mostly unknown to many of us because they do their work very quietly. He has headed that organization for a long time and he was responsible uh, in 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 um, in making global standards as well as in case of india national map policy 2005 his his handiwork remote sensing data policy 2011 then we had uh, the next policy national data sharing and analysis accessibility policy in 2012 you know his tenure was a happening tenure i think that's where we would request um, uh, sir uh, dr shivakumar um, general shivakumar to please share a case study, if possible, from the NSDI, so that you know the participants can be um, uh, can uh, see what has been done there during that period. Uh, with that introduction, because uh, time is less, I request you, sir, please uh, over to you. You may please share your uh, PPT. Yeah. And uh, yes, please. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Naidu, for such a nice words you have spoken. I don't know whether I deserve all those words you said. And uh, thank you so much. And um, uh, as far as uh, Professor Balakastar is concerned, uh, I, I consider uh, he is a kind of a visionary in this area at least. Nobody was talking about uh, a law is required. Uh, there are very legal issues in uh, spatial data and other things. And he started working very early in, in this country. I can only see a parallel uh, to him in uh, international arena. There is one Kevin Pomfret, who is a friend of mine. Uh, he has got a center for uh, spatial law in the U.S. Similarly, the Professor Balkistar started with this, and uh, I came to know him through one of his students who was pursuing his PhD way back in 2010. And uh, it's, it's really creditable to come to uh, conclusion that this is going to have a say, and I am sure it is going to increase now. The uh, the other day only I was talking to the students on the legal and ethical issues in GIS. And there was a lot of interest on this. Uh, I, I'm sure uh, many of the people who are now listening to this uh, webinar uh, will get benefit out of this Nalsar and Professor Balakastadi's effort. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. 
uh, I have made it for the next 14 or 15 minutes. Uh, I would like to share some of the thoughts which I had in my mind. Uh, though I have been asked to speak on uh, remote sensing, scope and opportunities in remote sensing, I have taken the liberty of uh, going a little bit uh, further and um, I'm going to call it in the geospatial sector as such. And uh, as uh, Group Captain Naidu has mentioned, uh, I would like to talk about a little bit about uh, NSDI because uh, I'm very passionate about uh, NSDI, uh, having been with it for the past 20, 21 years. Uh, this scope is enormous. Scope is enormous. When I say enormous, it's really enormous. At least in, the, in our country, it can, I can say it has got a huge potential to contribute substantially for employment generation, knowledge development, and uh, development of the industry and entrepreneurship, and uh, overall socio-economical progress. But also, in my view, this is really going to empower people. That is what is the most important thing. Uh, as uh, Group Captain Naidu was mentioning earlier, without knowing about it, people still start using it, and uh, that's how they are uh, getting benefit of the technologies. If you see ac across uh, the geospatial secretary is, sector is being increasingly nice as a technology platform to integrate both spatial and uh, non-spatial uh, data and non-spatial technologies as such. So because when the moment you add a location to it, it really unleashes its economic value manifold. And when used in decision making, that's how uh, it is a force multiplier, as we call it the services. It's a force multiplier, and uh, that's what that's how the geospatial sector. It's quite wide, quite wide in the sense. Uh, uh, there were enough examples given by my esteemed colleague uh, Dr. Subarao about how the maps and their value uh, in the to the economy itself. And uh, recently, there was uh, a discussion going on about. Uh, relaxation of the policies and all. At that time, uh, it was estimated that uh, the by liberalizing the um, uh, policy, uh, we would have been uh, expecting at least uh, about 1 lakh crores of uh, investment in this country on in geospatial sector. Uh, when uh, geospatial, generally people talk about only the GIS part of it, geographical information systems is one of the uh, backbone of the whole thing. Uh, because that is the one which may brings uh, very close up to the people. The outreach is going to be through the GAS only. Uh, but at the back, at the back of it is the, what is working is ultimately when you talk about a location-based services uh, or any similar kind of thing or a mapping, it is the positioning which is important. The positioning and the geodesy. Uh, geodesy is the one thing which is about the size and shape of Earth and uh, which is the backbone for the all geosciences in the world. And there has been a significant contribution by Survey of India to this science in, in the uh, two centuries ago, in the uh, starting from the 1800s, uh, 2 to 1840. Uh, some of you must have heard about it, the measurement of the great arc uh, of uh, Survey of India, which has uh, done it, of which uh, Dr. Sabara was a proud survey general of that. And they, that help the scientists and everyone to understand what is the size and shape of the earth and that is how we say it is a fundamental to all the today's advancement in uh, geosciences now with the advent of this uh, remote sensing is another uh, thing which has been talked about i think in the last four uh, days uh, uh, i think you must have heard a lot about the uh, remote sensing certainly yesterday there was a very interesting discussion on this uh, as uh, uh, Group Captain Adu said, I would like to talk more in detail or rather uh, about a case study on how we have gone about doing this spatial data infrastructure. And today, there is a large amount of discussion going on on uh, monetization pipeline uh, the government of India has brought. But I feel there is a huge potential scope for monetization of the data. Uh, the data is uh, uh, going to be game changer. Uh, there is a huge data about 
collected over 253 years and the data is all in analog form sir uh, sorry to interrupt you sir, sorry. sorry to interrupt you uh, may i request sorry. you to please mute your video sir i think there is a little difficulty with the uh, uh, net so if you mute your video oh, probably the okay. voice will go back yes. please that. don't worry there is a bit of interference and interruption happening in oh, okay, okay, okay. If you just mute your video i think it oh, yeah, yeah. thank you yeah, so I much i don't think you need the video yes sorry, uh, is sorry. it better now uh, it's so it's clear like, is it it's better clear. yes sir yes okay uh, so the data monetization is the aspect which um, i think none of uh, the people who were at the helm of the affairs today they have looked at it there is a tremendous amount of data because survey of india has only digitized a fraction of the data in the form of 1 to 50000 maps but there is much more than that, much more than that. And uh, it is uh, seen to be believed. So that is one of the aspects which uh, there is, uh, which is going to offer, whether you want to do research, uh, there is a, at least I, I feel there is a hundred PhDs can be earned by going through the data which is available in Geotech and Research Branch of Survey of India. Similarly, there is there are going to be multifarious products which are coming, going to come out of uh, uh, the geospatial sector itself. Uh, normally known as only we were talking about the conventional form of the maps, but it is not the maps alone. As uh, Dr. Naidu, the group Captain Naidu said, it is maps to apps. Today the apps are there. So innumerable products, innumerable combinations of technologies and different kinds of data, different time series of data, which is going to help decision makers across. Uh, even uh, right, the small button things like uh, the effectiveness and monitoring of uh, Neraga programs uh, are to a higher level uh, uh, security and defense management. At the same time, there are a number of people, wh whether it is in the government or in the industry or the individuals are looking for a particular solutions to their problems, which will certainly need the intervention of the geospatial sector. Uh, those solutions can certainly be provided and there is a huge scope. One example I can tell quickly is that Subaru talked about at length about the drones. If you have a drone, you, you even a small time farmer can utilize that and uh, continuously monitor his crop. And if there is anything happening to his crop, in that case, so then he can take pictures and share the knowledge with the uh, experts in the field. And there are enough number of uh, uh, products and solutions in this area to help the agricultural sector. And the, whatever is the pest or uh, disease, those kind of things can certainly be tackled immediately. Earlier days, it was not possible. And a number of other uh, things which are possible today are the solutions. Uh, after the solutions are the services. In today, if you ask me, there are hardly any services in this country based on geospatial data, uh, but there are innumerable possibilities for uh, uh, offering services to the people. Uh, only Google is offering to a great number of services today, but we have the capability to outsmart or rather outperform Google and give a better products because now the data of our country, this geospatial data is free from all the restrictions. Yeah, sorry. Now, coming to the opportunities part of it, one of the important areas which we need to do look at is research and development and the technology development aspect of it. The, uh, the drones which we were talking about is a fast changing uh, technology today, both from the point of view of the platform, the sensors, the communication of the data. Uh, uh, we are looking at now the real time communication of the data and offering a solution in the real time. Uh, whether it is in the civilian domain or in the defense domain, and use of the artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, crowdsourcing of the technologies. And uh, now earlier, uh, there was a misconception that we could not use the cloud services for storing the data because of the security comprehension. But now, after this uh, new policy guidelines, which have come into picture on February 2021, uh, there is a possibility to have uh, cloud-based uh, data processing 
and cloud based data services which will make the computing going to be very cheap or accessible to people uh, because the, both the data and the computing potential can be done through the cloud source. Uh, similarly, the major opportunities are going to be in data acquisition, uh, whether it is the mapping or uh, using the uh, aerial photography or drones, or even using a total station, GPS, any other, and uh, another great innovation which has been done in this country during Dr. Subaru's time was uh, CORS, continuously operated reference stations. And now they have started coming up. The entire world by CORS, there are going to be a large number of uh, applications which will be thrown out, thrown up. Uh, we will be able to, for example, you want to measure the area of the land you are holding, you can just take your um, uh, uh, smartphone and walk across and you will be able to get it. That is because very accurately to a uh, square inch you can get out a square, uh, square meter you can get or square centimeter you can get. Uh, because the continuously operating reference stations will suddenly give you quick uh, corrections to the position and information which is coming from the GPS satellites. And the, the data which is uh, available, whether it is a satellite images or aerial image or drone images, too much, a uh, huge among us data is there and how to manage those data. Uh, because uh, the drones are going to collect huge data. Similarly, the satellites are churning out large, large amount of data. There will be needing need for uh, development of the data management techniques and the analytics techniques, either it is a predictive analytics or uh, other kind of uh, business analytics using this data. And uh, how the data which you get, uh, you have to discriminate whether it is the form of the data itself or the product or so. Uh, solution. One of the major bottlenecks which I faced uh, when I was in the NSDA and the Department of Science and Technology as head of the Natural Resource Data Management System Division, I found that the number of people available are much less. So the capacities have be, to be built. And other thing which is required is everyone should know uh, to some extent of geospatial data whether it is a um, uh, village level officer or at the national level officers or an individual. So they must know how at least how to make use of the technology and get benefit out of it. So there are going to be large number of opportunities as far as the uh, capacity building and outreach. Either, uh, uh, like one of the things which Nalsar uh, is doing the same, uh, running uh, training programs, courses, um, capsules and similarly uh, uh, trying to indicate people through the even the, in a gram sabha somebody should be going and discussing and telling them how they can get empowered through these kind of data sets and this uh, technology itself. Uh, as we have been talking I'll, I would like to talk briefly for another five minutes next five minutes or so on the spatial data infrastructure. Uh, which is a important component in this country today, and it is going to play a major role uh, after this new policy regime, uh, where the NSDA is going to be in the center stage, uh, implementing the policy, overseeing the policy, and uh, uh, how we are going to enable the people to make the data available and accessible, and use it, uh, develop it to the requirements which we need to address. Uh, the major issues I will discuss quickly. Uh, the NSDI is a uh, national level the spatial data infrastructure, but at the different levels, uh, there are uh, uh, spatial data infrastructure initiatives. At the global level today, we have the, the United Nations Global Geospatial Information Management. And at national level, we have NSDI. And most of the states have got their own uh, state SDI, and uh, there are experiments done. And at uh, at the district level, there are about almost 100 plus districts are covered with the spatial data infrastructure as a part of the projects of the Department of Science and Technology, and then at the village level too. Uh, wh why this NSDI is required was uh, being discussed uh, about 20, 20 years ago to be precisely. The end of 2000, year 2000, we found that there are a large number of organizations at that time in the country, whether it is a Survey of India or NRSC, Forest Survey of India, NATMO, 
geological survey for like that so there are about 17 18 agencies identified and they have all collected data over hundreds of years but what is happening to that data as i have already said uh, most of the data even the premier uh, mapping organization like survey of india is all in analog form and before that itself why we are not able to make use of all that data today or uh, leverage those data sets is first of all thing is lack of metadata uh, we don't know what what data we are having and that is a case with uh, all of us even at individual level you lack the metadata that is a data about data what all data you are holding and how it was uh, uh, collected how it was processed what accuracy is no information is available so what is the lack of metadata second is the data is all in analog form so the problem is uh, that data is all in analog form you can't really use it in the computer domain today how we we can uh, use one we one with the another so the data has to be converted into digital domain and more importantly the people do not want to share the data it is not only the organization it is the individuals or even within the organization one division does not want to share the data with others that is a human mindset but what we they have to understand and make them understand is that by sharing the data you are leveraging your data sets and it is adding value to that and uh, the lastly the, the even if you get all these things done you know the data is not in proper you won't be able to uh, uh, overlay one data set on the other because of various reasons uh, could be the change in the projection change in the datum or the computer format is different or the resolution is different like that there are number of issues so the, all those issues are one apart the policy of the government those days was very bad so the, the data was restrictive whether it is uh, uh, remote sensing data or the map data they were all put under the lock and key but today the situation has changed and it, it is all even the policy or most of the things what uh, i have been talking to you about all these five issues which are uh, necessitated in national spatial data infrastructure have been addressed over a period of time and in the nsdi we have got a metadata standard metadata standard and to a great extent metadata is there but again restricted to one particular scale about 1 is to 50000 if you ask that is a basic map scale on which the metadata is available and the data is also available in the uh, uh, digital form and now we made it interoperable and more importantly the all these 17 agencies they regularly sit and agree to share the data and that's how the when the national data sharing and accessibility policy has come under the open data initiative uh, we have got the data.gov.in in which even the spatial data is available today and many users are there who are exploiting the data and uh, preparing the apps and um, finding solutions for their issues so how this was possible is through the standards and uh, metadata and each department each agency had its own node and we have developed the standardized uh, search and access protocols through a clearing house national geo portal was created uh, through nsda mechanisms which is still there uh, which will help in even a common man to understand what data is available for which which department and how he can get it so one example of that uh, 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 NSDA is web map service. Web map service of the Survey of India, those days it is a open series maps. And these maps were, uh, services were started. The web map service is nothing but through the NSDA mechanism, each department which has got whatever data they have got, that they will give it a standardized format. And each service uh, of map service coming from each department can be overlaid one over the other by the user himself. One example I will show you is the map of a survey of India along with the uh, satellite image, which, which was uh, which this kind of services are now available, but only to some limited extent. Why I'm showing is this kind of service are required for each and every data set which we have got. Whether it is web, web service, there are many more like that web feature service are all standards based uh, standards of the OGC, ISO, our own uh, BIS. Uh, one uh, last but one slide I want to share with 
This is a dream of uh, more than 20 years. I'll show you a small example, uh, which uh, even today is not possible. So this is where uh, there is a scope for people to work, continue to work. So if, if anyone wants to have an information or he has an issue or a problem, then you, you should be able to go and touch the front uh, door of a electronic front door of a SDA. Things like the what the kind of uh, scale, what kind of format, what kind of uh, um, specifications you should have, that should be the same. Today it is possible because of the AI and ML, they drive, they can drive very easily this uh, kind of efforts. Then the that from there a product could be defined, the product which is required by the individual, and then this workflow engines can generate bring the data from various sources, stitch the data, make the product, and deliver it online or offline. But today, this, this, believe me, this side was made in the year 2000. Even today, it is not possible uh, in the real, real terms, but it should be possible if we all work together. Uh, this is the last slide, mostly. Uh, we had a, there was some discussion about this Ministry of Human Resource Development and a task force in the year 2013. Dr. Kasturangan was the chairman. I was also a member of that committee. Then the committee has uh, estimated uh, this is the requirement of the manpower at that time in the year 2013. So overall, uh, you needed about 500,000 people. Uh, but where are the professionals? They are not there. So the the committee has suggested at different levels what all should happen. But some things are happening. For example, the national level institution has come up in Hyderabad, National Institute for Geoinformatic Geo Science and uh, Technology. It is uh, uh, earlier uh, Indian Institute of Surveying Mapping has uh, represented and uh, now it is being made an autonomous institution. But at the same time, you need people even at the lower level. We have to do. Uh, educate the people and bring them across uh, for every kind of activity, whether it is a school students uh, or a village revenue officer or a person working for his uh, PhD degree in university. So, depending upon the requirement, the qualifications and the um, knowledge required is going to differ. Even here, there are many more uh, uh, initiatives are required to bring. Uh, and achieve that kind of uh, manpower without uh, having the requisite uh, technical manpower who, uh, who understand this geospatial sector in full. We cannot uh, really achieve what uh, Dr. Sabara was talking about uh, 2.4 lakh uh, crores of uh, uh, revenue or a 5 trillion economy. Uh, these are the few thoughts I wanted to share. And recently, the, any of you are interested. Next year, the United Nations uh, uh, Global Geospatial Information Management uh, is going to meet in Hyderabad. Uh, so I wish uh, many of uh, people who are listening to this should be able to join that and um, get benefit out of it, where the whole world is uh, geospatial professionals that are going to congregate in Hyderabad sometime towards the end of next year. Uh, I think recently there was a cut and rise up a few days ago, uh, which was uh, done by the Department of Science and Technology. Oh, with these uh, few words, I think uh, I hand over, hand you over to Group Captain Naidu. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, that's wonderful information. Thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, now I request um, Professor Balkrishna Reddy to say a few words before. Uh, are you there, sir? Ready, sir? Yeah. Because, yes, sir? yes, sir, I am there. Yeah, because uh, he had a power failure for a very brief period. Thank you, sir. So uh -huh. over, to, over to you, sir. Uh, after that, we will open the session for the question uh -huh. answers. We have some questions. Some people have posted some questions on my uh, cell phone on my on my WhatsApp also. So I will we will take that now questions. Thank you, sir. <coughs> okay. Good evening uh, again, uh, everyone. So thank you very much, both of you, sir. You know, lot of information which is uh, relevant and uh, also updated uh, thing. 
one aspect just I would like to mention again, you know, we have elaborate discussion on GS, but the other one is uh, are very much connected. Uh, Sometimes we, you know, interchangeable word we use, you know, GIS remote sensing. But if you look at, you know, remote sensing again, you know, part of the satellite sensing from outer space and we have developed a lot of rules, regulations relating to that, particularly United Nations General Assembly in 1986 came out with the resolution urging, asking the, uh, you know, world community to use these uh, you know, remote sensing activities in the interest of the benefit of mankind, you know, and then it also laid down certain uh, rights relating to the censored state, sensing state, sovereignty, confidentiality, data protection, all these other issues also now a very important part of the remote sensing. Of course, benefits, you know, uh, Swarnas Barasar and Sar also spoke about that, similar with the remote sensing, but there are certain legal issues today. India is one of the leader in the remote sensing. You all know that, you know, yesterday we were talking about the space technology. Uh, two areas India, you know, is doing extremely well and is going to do also. One is the, you know, launching uh, satellites. So India has a huge potential, huge market. And then other one is the remote sensing. Our remote sensing uh, is one of the cheap and best in the world. So including, the, you know, countries like United States, you know, companies, uh, by uh, remote sensing uh, data from us and they will uh, again, you know, uh, redistribute that kind of uh, capability India has in the remote sensing sector. Of course, we also came out with, uh, you know, policies on remote sensing part of the international legal system. But one thing yesterday I was talking about uh, all these things is lack of legislation. So remote sensing GIS is part of the, you know, general space technology, satellite technology. So lack of uh, having a, a legislation which is hampering and though private participation is going to hap uh, happen in the not only space sector, but GIS remote sensing, but one legal hurdle we are going to look at is the uh, lack of legislation. Uh, we all know friends, we are, you know, uh, judge's role is to interpret law, not make law. If disputes are coming, like Sar was, you know, mentioning about it's a million dollar, billion dollar business is going to happen. So the moment when business is going to happen, litigation is going to come. How are we going to look at? How are we going to solve? That is the big question. That's where Nalsar Shibdin and says that part of uh, you know academic social responsibility. We thought we visualized you know uh, ten years back as a student of again you know JNU. I did my M Phil and PhD in aerospace law to continue that legacy. We started center here, and of course we are trying you know our best to promote uh, these upcoming futuristic courses that you know through value added uh, distance education. Why distance education? Lot of queries I also get, you know, sir, why not you offer, you know, regular courses, including lot of my, uh, you know, defense people ask, sir, we'll get, you know, lean for two years. So why don't you put this as a regular course? I said, no, the reason is that, you know, simply again, I want to take these courses at the doorsteps of the needy with affordable cost and they know uh, they need not spend uh, full time and they need not do these things while working I, again they can pursue so that was the idea that uh, second thing is if regular courses they have to spend a lot of uh, you know money and also of course time but to, you know <coughs> to overcome that we thought you know we do and definitely successful today i can confidently say that our uh, like earlier it was center for air and space law uh, group captain naidu sir was mentioning today we you know upgraded that into aerospace and defense because you all know that you know what kind of uh, things happening in the defense sector also maritime sector also so to expand the scope center has been you know uh, upgraded as a center for aerospace defense and we have uh, like five six courses i am sure you know again you know subject to correction nowhere in this part of the world i can say that this kind of unique combination is there it is a law technology, I said, and law and management. So that is the combination which we adopted, and I can confidently say that these are all so far successful. Uh, so and this uh, PG diploma now we call advanced PG diploma in remote sensing. We have a six papers, again one common paper, and most of the takers again scientists. The space technology, telecom, and remote sensing, uh, geospatial. I have, uh, I think, 70, 80 percent of my intake is again. They are coming from science, science, scientific background or technological background. So what we do here is that we begin with the law. So why law is important? You all know though. Though we are all, you know, most of uh, you know participants today are you know scientific background or technological background. But one thing I want to tell you, friends. 
whatever the background we are, whether you are a you know scientist or technocrat, all uh, ignorance of law is no excuse. You all know that you have to you know know the law. So need not be expert in that. Similarly, you know we uh, as a part of again I said academic social responsibility, we want to see that you know. Uh, these next five years, next 10 years, what is going to be the future of, you know, uh, courses. So if we do, you know, routine everything, I don't think, you know, much contribution is coming from NALSA. So that is the reason why we want, we deviated to some extent for, you know, good. And so far we can say that successful. Today, I'm confidently say that, you know, there are 1200 officers got benefited with the, you know, these courses and particularly uh, aviation law, air transport management, you know, majorly because we have started those that course way back in seven, eight years back. Other courses just recently. And out of that, I can again proudly say that 40 to 45 percent of our intake is defense people. They know the value of these courses. That's why uh, they are our main, you know, uh, stakeholders. I can say that. So. I, with this, I think, you know, I can take up courses, but when it comes to, you know, uh, advanced PG diploma in uh, remote sensing GIS. So one paper is the uh, law or legal background introduction to law. Then we have remote sensing technology and law. GIS technology and law like coastal zone, you know, regulation and management, satellite technology and telecom law. Then we have a information technology and cyber technology law. So I, I always say that I earlier also said. Law and technology have a very, you know, uh, close connection. Yet there are having a problems. Law follows technology, or technological developments needs law. So it is no, you know, GIS remote sensing is no exception to that. That's why we have these courses in combination of technology law, combining important areas like telecom, GIS, you know, information technology, cyber technology, along with the legal issues. That is the course we have with this one year course. So with this, I will stop here, sir. Any questions we can take up. Thank you uh, for everyone. Thank you very much, sir. We have uh, some questions. Uh, Syed uh, has asked, about land disputes and uh, Dr. Sobarov has already answered that uh, how the the disputes pendency can be brought down uh, by using the GIS technologies, especially when it uh, relates to the uh, land and revenue disputes. I think uh, that question is already sir. sir add, add to Subaru, sir. Actually, sir was mentioning like like more than fifty today, friends. Actually, you know, sixty six percent of the civil litigation is connected to directly or indirectly with uh, land. Land is a major important contributor. That's why again I will come to since its question came. I want to just answer part of academic social responsibility. Now, sir, we trained you know a lot of para paralegals. Thousand paralegals we trained, and in in turn, these pa paralegals both in AP and Telangana have settled two lakhs, more than a million. Correct figure is two lakh land related disputes resolved by our you know para you know legal training which Nalsar gave. So that is where we take proud that you know that is what part of academic social responsibility using technology. Of course, uh, we took lot of help from Subarao sir also. Because he has his own drone, so you know, measurements and all those things part of our uh, team. So that is the thing. Yes, you are right, sir. You know more than sixty percent today litigation is coming uh, relating to uh, land, and today this technology can be a viable you know option to settle the disputes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, how can we reduce land grab, land encroachment? Uh, leading to protection of natural resources, ponds, rivers, forests, etc. This is a question by um, Shivacharana. I think almost related question only. Maybe uh, Dr. Subarao can uh, probably speak a little on this sir, because probably the previous answer was not satisfying this gentleman. So if you can just highlight it. Uh, please unmute your mic, sir. Yeah, General Shukmar has already mentioned in his uh, presentation. See, we have uh, proposed to set up, and it is already completed in some, some states, to set up, uh, to establish course network, CORS, continuously reference, uh, continuously operated reference system. This is a network of GPS stations, which will enhance the capacity of every GPS chip that comes into that area. Say, as I see it, once we have all these things operational, 
and I'm very confident about our IT professionals of the country that we we'll, are going to have apps which will turn the smartphones. Today, those apps are available outside. So in India, we may have improved apps, not just those ones. Say you will have an app in your own mobile phone, which carrying it, if you go to your field, your cultivation field, go to all the four corners, come back, it will give you the exact area. Okay. Exact to probably the nearest uh, sub square yard or sub square meter accuracy it can give. So, this is one area where you can identify whether there is any encroachment, whether the neighbor has encroached into your land or something like that. That is number one. Okay, it also helps you in a big way in the cities. See, most of the purchasers when I when we go there, if you are buying a piece of land of more than 1000. Not even more than let's say 500 square of, out of land. What happens is that fellow just takes a tape and he measures. He says, "Sir, it is okay," and you come home. You don't know whether you lost 10 square yards or whether uh, what happened there. See, all these kind of nonsense can be controlled with a simple, what I say, mechanism. As I said, you will have, you are likely to have these kind of apps, and that will protect you. Basically, if you have a mechanism like this, which a common person, a common purchaser can also verify, then what I say, these kind of disputes, they automatically get reduced. Okay. And uh, what is the second part of the question? I missed. Uh, it's, uh, uh, for, uh, forests for protection and other things. Forest protection. Other resources, ponds, forests, and. Uh, yeah, the same thing. See, uh, there we are entering a sort of a public domain also. Yes. See, if you have the knowledge that there was a pond here and somebody has encroached it, at least with the same setup, as I said, with the same mechanism, you can identify and uh, take your say with the mobile you identify the land go back and take a old map then you know yes there was a pond and today the pond is vanished then it is uh, you can make a complaint and of course then it is left to the government whether they are going to act and restore the pond or whether they are going to ignore it at least here you can raise a query with scientific evidence see that is the best facility that you are likely to get with these kind of mechanisms that the country is going to put in okay sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, this is for ready, sir. Uh, Anchal, although yesterday you have answered this question, but again, it's coming up. Can a PG degree, master's degree and an advanced diploma be taken, uh, taken up simultaneously? No, no, I said no, sir. Okay. Because uh, I, again, general, you know, just for a further clarification, I want to say that uh, you are allowed to take uh, do, uh, two du dual degrees, one regular and one, you know, distance mode. Any, any, so if you are taking, you know, a regular, you can do distance mode here, or if you are regular here, you can take distance mode other part. But in NALSA rules, it's clear that we don't allow at a time two degrees, even though some people very curious are, I want to do both, you know, these things, but you know, rules won't permit, sir. That's right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Pooja, uh, Nandimath, and uh, Prahlathan, both of them are asking for opportunities in GS and RS law. I think they have, uh, this has been ex uh, extensively covered by both these speakers. Uh, in fact, uh, Subaru sir has put a reply also that. Uh, there is one question that has come to my, my this one, sir. Uh, for, uh, this is for um, uh, General Shiv Kumar. When is IC, IIC technologies coming for campus placement uh, in Nalsar University uh, for the uh, advanced diploma? Uh, Candidates, this is uh, they want to know. Sir. Is IIC keen to come sometime later, maybe uh, for campus placement? Uh, should be possible. I think it, it will happen very soon because now there is going to be large amount of uh, work, uh, which is uh, going to be with the government, with the, the industry, with the because of the changes in the policies. They also bring in the legal issues. Uh, we do need uh, people with the requisite qualifications. Certainly, there is going to be a demand. I am very sure about it. Uh, in the near future, probably uh, IIC technology server should be visiting you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, you know, add, add it to, sir, actually, not only this uh, particular technology you are talking about, sir, generally, we get a lot of, uh, you know, uh, requests from uh, law firms. Today, law firms are specializing and because it's a million yes. dollar business is involved, you know, uh, these kind of things. So they want that, sir, can you give some students, you know, specializing in some so and so area like that? Yes, uh, definitely people are approaching because if you have a domain knowledge, 
then you can do better than others. Of course, liars can do anything, everything in the uh, sky. <laughs> that is, you know, uh, no, if you have a special domain knowledge and today we are into specialized field, specialized knowledge. So a lot of requests we also get that, sir, if you have uh, somebody who is in knowledge in aviation, you know, space, that kind of thing. So I think, you know, in future, uh, definitely uh, law firms or other, you know, like uh, people who are doing, you know, a lot of projects, they may approach uh, definitely that. Sure. That, that, there is, uh, thank you, sir. There is an ad, uh, uh, almost add on question by uh, Syed uh, who says, uh, Is there placement uh, opportunity after doing the PG courses uh, from Nalsar? Okay. Pl placements 100% we don't give, you know, because this is a distance education. I am very clear, friends, you know, again, those who are listening. Uh, earlier also, I got questions. We don't provide, we don't give any, you know, placement guarantee, all those. These are all value addition courses. Okay, these are all distance education. Of course, earlier people also asked fellowship, other things. So, no, this is uh, generally, but uh, definitely, you know, I can tell you today, if you have a gold with you, you can make any ornament. If you have a knowledge, specialized knowledge, people will come to undertake. That is, I know, there is no doubt about that. As a policy, we don't promise, we don't have any, you know, this thing, even for our regular student. I wish to inform you that Nalsar doesn't, you know, have a formal, you know, placement cell. Normally students do, and of course, our students get, you know, 100% or sometimes we say that 120%. You know how companies will come and go back, you know, bend back without having a candidate. That is the trend. But as a policy, no. Uh, I would like to add, actually, the, yeah. uh, when I was in service, uh, there was a case uh, which came to the Supreme Court. Sorry. Uh, uh, one of the serving chief justice of a high court in the current state, in the country. Uh, he was involved in some activity, uh, which ultimately the Supreme Court uh, requested us to provide some uh, answer to that. Uh, then uh, we used the technology and provided, and uh, that particular chief justice had to resign and go. That is the power of geospatial. I just wanted to yeah. uh, So the, if some legal professionals who are empowered with this knowledge, they they can do those things uh, themselves. Uh, uh, can I add I, yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Uh, just uh, we are since uh, about uh, the scope for the legal activities in the GIS is uh, what a sort of being discussed or some more doubt to this. What I would like to say is just today I had a meeting. I can't. I don't have the full details as of now. But today I had a meeting with uh, somebody. An insurance company, a big insurance company, is interested in investing in uh, this uh, cadastral surveys of the government. Now you can imagine the idea is that the insurance company they want to insure the title of the land. Okay, the title of the land is being provided using these technologies which we have mentioned just now. Okay, then comes in the insurance company. Still, the project is incomplete. Okay, the projects have started across the country. Already insurance people have jumped in. So now you can imagine what kind of doors that is going to open for the legal professionals as well. That's it. Sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, if I if I may add, I, although I'm not an expert on subject that we are discussing, but all this with the RTI Act, yeah, the lawyers can really use it because they can put a ten rupees RTI and ask for the details because now the government has the data. And they have to give the data and there is a, a separate department that is holding the data. There is another department that is uh, supposed to be responsible for overseeing these uh, encroachments and things like that. So, uh, they, they generally don't interact. So, uh, RTI information will come, it can be used. So, uh, things have become much, much easier like what uh, um, General Shivakumar was saying against that uh, I court chief justice. Yes, now it is available at, uh, at a cost of 10 rupees. The information is available at a cost of 10 rupees. That's what uh, the uh, Mr. Karsh Kumar is asking me. What is the full form of BA in uh, BA and MA in MA? Uh, I think uh, uh, that's something which Bachelor of Arts and Master of Arts. So that's uh, uh, otherwise there are no other questions. Sir. Uh, 
no no more uh, questions okay sir one clarification i want to give because you know uh, we are putting you know ma and then we are putting in bracket. probably he is asking for that only yeah yeah so aviation law air transport management then you know uh, defense and technology all those friends actually you know earlier we tried to you know uh, we requested the ugc to give us ms master of studies so but you know that is not there in the ugc list we had you know two years quarrel with them i stopped courses also but people started sir you don't worry about the degree we want nalsar degree so <laughs> then you know i said okay you know they accepted that you give ma then bracket whatever you want to put and you know syllabus is all the same so that's some technical thing because to fulfill the ugc you know requirement we are putting all other our, our courses ma bracket aviation law air transport ma defense and security ma space like that that's i think is a you know query but this is a clarification i want to give sir. Uh, if I am permitted to add, uh, sir, uh, Professor Reddy, uh, see the, the the demarcation between arts, science, commerce. Uh, the, uh, earlier, when uh, the olden days, the studies were there. Uh, our our uh, rishis uh, were scientists, were doctors, were engineers, were uh, philosophers. Today, also, a person who does uh, after post graduation, people were doing M Phil. So that fill is philosophy. Philosophy, it could be in engineering, it could be in technology, it could be in science, it could be in art, it could be in law. Now PhD. So doctor. So doctorate. Uh, he is not a medical doctor. He is called doctor. So that way, I think the 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 nomenclature of uh, masters of arts or uh, the MS or MSc or M Tech uh, for law courses and a combination of law and technology courses. Uh, I, I see no reason why there should be a doubt on on that. But yes, uh, it's uh, you have clarified very well. Thank you very much. Yes, one more, sir. Today we are again, you know, coming back to the same new education yes. policy 2020 is now. You can take any option. You as an art student, you can take science. You can take yes. you know that. So that is, I think, what you are quoting, Ruchi. All those. I think new education policy is going to giving that leverage to take up any subject you want. Mentioned, you know that. So that's uh, other. Uh, that's uh, you know some of the technology schools uh, colleges they already had uh, something like um, Vedic uh, studies something like public administration political science sociology are all options for BTEC students they are already there uh, uh, the interdisciplinary approach history um, uh, you know Bollywood you know critic on Bollywood these kind of subjects are there in various uh, colleges it's been there for a while I think that. Sir, yeah, sir, one more uh, one more question came, sir. What sir. kind of scope is there? You know, further scope of uh, after studying this course, some question came. Friends, actually, you know, uh, of course, one is the domain knowledge we are saying. So if you do the master master's course, you can go for PhD and you can for, go for teaching. And of course, uh, uh, apart from this, you can be a consultant. Only thing is, you can't do a regular practice because this is a not you know full fledged law course. So law being a professional course. You have to do regular, you know, that's except that practicing rest of the things you can do wonders. So, you know, that is the advantage with these courses. You can go for further studies and you can now have your own consultancy. Why you want to work for somebody? Why not? You have your own thing. If you prove that uh, uh, like expert, then people will come to you. I want to mention maybe nine sir, one minute. I want to take please, sir, please. globalization. Actually, you know, even uh, some of my advocate friends, I want to tell you that today part of the GATS agreement that's called general agreement on trading services. There are 165 services part of that particular agreement, including legal service today, legal service, you know, India is a party to WTO GATS. And of course, we had to accept we, we being a party we have accepted. So you know what is the beauty of this uh, thing? So you can give your advice sitting here. There are you no know, out of these 165 services. Why I'm saying is that though it is not so relevant our discussion, but I said friends earlier, ignorance of law is no excuse. But today again, I am ending with saying that ignorance of WTO is no excuse because WTO is consisting of 185 agreements. Part of that one agreement, what I was talking about is the GATS agreement. All the services. I can bet you whatever the profession you have, you are part of, you know, international treaty that is the GATS agreement. So coming to the legal thing, there are four modes of service of uh, supply of service that's called cross border service. Here service provider and service receiver sits in their place and they know uh, they can do work like 
telephone, fax, email, all these things, and you will get your remuneration through, you know, uh, online. So online. this is the thing. Today, boundaries are becoming meaningless. If you have a knowledge, I can tell you this is and India being a emerging power, emerging space power or whatever you call it. And being a other day you are mentioning about India is being a youth country of the world. And today there is a saying that 19th century was belongs to UK or Europe. 20th century was belongs to America. 21st century is Asian century, but more particularly Indian century because you know. And we have proven these things in technology. We have proven this in medicine. We have proven these other fields and we are going to do similar thing in the uh, space technology, particularly. So when I say space technology, yes, uh, remote sensing, all this part of that. That's why there is no doubt India is going to do, you know, uh, uh, tremendous work, but definitely, unfortunately, legal uh, things are not so. That is where, you know, we all have to work for, not for individual, but for country. If really we have to take these things, you know, at a global context, international, definitely these are going to be a very useful thing. With this, I'll, you know, stop, sir. Thank you. Sorry, I took two minutes. No, no, no please, sir. Uh, please, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think uh, we will uh, close this session. Uh, that's uh, five sessions, wonderful sessions. Uh, many of you have uh, come repeatedly also. Uh, Grateful to both the speakers, uh, they have given us so much of uh, information and so many takeaways. Uh, Professor Reddy, uh, grateful to you, sir. First of all, you know, creating futuristic training programs and tra courses in the university uh, uh, under the CADL, uh, Center for Aerospace and Defense Laws, and also year on year conducting these kind of uh, webinars uh, where people are uh, getting the latest in the field. I think this is like the small capsules you are giving once a while so that uh, their their knowledge is strengthened and uh, we are grateful to you for uh, envisioning such activities and because of of course your uh, uh, your network you get such wonderful speakers such uh, highly learned speakers it's all uh, enrichment it's all enrichment in fact uh, there are private messages to me coming on the uh, chat box saying the wonderful uh, events all five days a uh, lot of knowledge being shared uh, there it's very useful in their own professional lives that's what they are thanking they are thanking many of them are sending messages so thank you so much professor reddy for this uh, thanks to nalsar uh, of course, the speakers, both of them today. Thank you so much. Thank you all participants. Uh, till the next series of webinars, I think we will uh, we will say thank you and goodbye. Uh, ready, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, last word. I, I to say thank because last five days, first of all, I troubled you. <laughs> Every day, I know you have postponed your other things. I, that's why I don't know, you know, with uh, simple thanks, I don't uh, do simple, but you as a, my friend, my, you know, with, I am like, once again, thank you so much for uh, moderating all these five days, wonderful sessions, including, you know, inputting, giving your own inputs. And I thank all the speaker, previous speakers, start from Sagar, he has done wonderful work, uh, particularly in the aviation opportunities. Then we have uh, Major Jan Subramanian sir, he spoke about the defense security opportunities. And then Professor P. V. Rao sir, he spoke about the maritime, uh, Sagara Sampada, is, you know, we had, uh, you know, then, you know, uh, today we have uh, these speakers. So all, and yesterday we had, uh, you know, again, Dr. Mm -hmm. Sridhar Murthy. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you know, I thank everyone and particularly the, you know, people behind this screen are, you know, again, you know, Tariq and uh, Lakshmi, Ruchi, they are the people who worked. Just we, I, I am coming and just, you know, showing my face, except that nothing I am doing. But thank you once again for everyone, you know, thank you. Sir, One thanks. routine you have set, and now uh, tomorrow onwards, I will miss that routine, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I have thoroughly enjoyed it. I have thoroughly enjoyed thank it. you, Subaro, sir. Thank you, Shiva. Right, thank you, thank you everyone. Okay, sir. Bye. Sir, Bye. before thank you close you. the thank session, you. can I yeah, add Lakshmi. one thing? Yeah, please, La Lakshmi, go ahead. Lakshmi, I know I, I, I should give, you know, please. Lakshmi, wait. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, we wanted to uh, inform that uh, next week we will send out a Google Forms for all the people who have attended all five or at least four webinars. So that check your name in those and let us know so that we can issue the attendance certificate. Very good. Very good. By, yeah. At max, by end of next week, we'll send out the Google form. So keep checking your emails, even in promotions and spam. Does it uh, apply to the moderator also? 
<laughs> yes, sir. We had to, because yes, after five, yes. four, we said, but you have attended five, so we had to yes, count. Sir. You'll get a special certificate, sir. Thank you. Uh, they're, they're, they're also asking about the uh, uploading of the YouTube, uh, YouTube on the YouTube Lakshmi. When can they get the recordings? Although I have yesterday mentioned within three working days, we'll give it. Uh, yes, so, sir. it will be uploaded in next three to four working days. Four working days. Okay. Uh, my night, sir, it will be uploaded on the Naltar's official YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what. With the same name. Yes. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank, thank you. you and good night to all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you, the team. Thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you.